The Mirabol section of the festival is a music video and um, promos and advertising section, but it's also got some very exciting feature films and live events in there this year. We're, um, we're really pleased to be expanding Mirabol a little bit more into the live arena, so we've got a fantastic exclusive gig from British Sea Power. We've got a wonderful night of DJs and VJs at the Caves, which is called An Unusual Void. That's all very exciting. Um, in terms of the feature films in Mirabol, um, it's real icons of the music world, and these films are all very exclusive to us. For the first time, the happy folk felt fearful, for they knew that soon the monkey would stir from its deep, deep sleep. Then there came a sound, distant at first, that grew into a catastrophe, so immense it could be heard far away in space. There were no screams. There was no time. The mountain called Monkey had spoken. There was only fire. And then, nothing. He's not only a record producer, he's a songwriter, a poet, a musician, a video expert, and overall a Rasta man. The man I'm talking about is none other than Lee Scratch Perry, better known in Jamaica as the Upsetter, Kusha. There's not much the father could do for me because I don't think he didn't know anything about how to have feelings for somebody. And just maybe he liked me and he think he wanted me to be his slave or something like that. Because then he married another woman and I have to um, just moving around like um, a handyman and something like that. I didn't like the idea, so I decided to run away to, to my mother. I had a sort of crush on Arthur. I said there was something that he exuded that was both both uh, delicate and uh, uh, exquisite-minded and youthful, and at the same time uh, uh, oddly reticent. In 1971, we recorded a, a, a number of uh, mantras, and Arthur was so quick and sympathetic as a cellist that he could play absolute unison with anything that I was singing after he heard it once or twice. James Brown, Papa's Got a Brand New Bag came on. So Arthur started saying, you know, we can call it Brown Bag Records and this and that. And when he said Brown Bag Records, I said, well, that's interesting. I said, I said, because I'm into a sleeping bag. And, and Arthur went ballistics. He goes, that's it, sleeping bag records. It, like Arthur's thing was, yeah, I got a new bag, man. My bag is sleeping. I'm into a sleeping bag. I was back and forth on the road with James Brown, and um, Bob was playing this music, and all of a sudden I'm hearing this funky organ playing. It was like funky music, and I'm like, this stuff is hot. Who is this? He said, this is Arthur. I said, not that little white boy, that strange little white boy. He said, yeah. He had to be the funkiest white boy that I had ever met. There was no chance for extension. There was no chance to be destroyed or really be created there. Just lived. And that's OK for some people, but I always felt something different stirring in me. In the next few years, I took to studying Hank Williams, banged away on an old Gibson. I worked in a bookstore. I drew. I modeled for Robert. I scrawled in my notebooks. I wandered through the debris of the 60s. So much joy, yet malcontent. So many voices raised and snuffed. My generation's heritage seemed in jeopardy. Okay, you'll have to stop filming now. <laughs>